Work software, Applique Made Easy. You can submit questions by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send your questions at any time during the presentation. Our presenter is Debbie Lashbrook. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you, Julie, and welcome, everyone. Bernita DesignWorks software can create all sorts of applique using the Cutwork tool. You can also use the Cutwork tool in so many ways to create all sorts of projects for accessories, garments, quilts, and the home. In this webinar, you're going to learn how easy it is to create applique using DesignWorks software, and the focus will be on raw edge applique. You will receive a step-by-step -step handout, a PDF of the presentation, and the CMX file to create the design. All these will be posted on the website following the webinar, and that's Bernina.com. As far as what we're going to cover in this webinar, we're going to talk about auto border. We'll talk about editing cut work. We're going to use each of the drawing tools to create the design. We'll edit nodes and then change the sequence of the design. I'm also going to include some scanning tips at the end of the webinar in case you want to draw your own design on paper and then scan it in. There are three tools if you're unfamiliar with design works and the three tools are the paint work tool, the crystal work tool and the cut work tool. In the last webinar, I talked about the paintwork tool. This is the cutwork tool, and I'll have a future webinar on design works covering crystal work. But all of these tools are part of the design works suite. You can combine any of the tools with the software to increase your creative possibilities. So design works is a modular system and you decide what pieces and parts are best for you to create your projects after deciding which components or which tools you want to use you can purchase a code card that will activate that component of the software so for example if you have paintwork um, uh, the paintwork tool and the design work software and you don't have cut work but you decide you'd like to get cut work, all you would need to purchase is a code card and the cut work tool from your dealer and you're ready to go with cut work. Cut work has four different cutting directions that are programmed into the design as color stops. And just as a, an embroidery mach machine will stop to have you change threads, the machine stops so that you can change the dial on the cutwork tool. And as you work around a design with all four of the positions, you will have a cutout object. As I mentioned, cutwork will do all sorts of different kinds of applique. With most types of cut work, you need two files. And the first file is used for cutting the shapes. And you can see over here on the right, the cut work tool is going around and cutting out these shapes. So that's one of the files. And there, the fabric has been backed by a double-sided sticky so that you can peel the paper away and then add that to the background fabric. The second file that you need is a stitch file. And this has a placement line where you, that will show you where to place that cutout piece. After that stitches, you'll place the cutout piece on your fabric, and then you will finish the stitching with a cover stitch. Now, as far as the different types of applique, one of the stitches that you can do is blanket stitch applique. And here you see it around this petal. And here's a close up view of the way it looks in the software. When you use blanket stitch applique, the stitch width is very, very narrow. And the stitch width is controlled by the length. So the default width and length is 1.5 millimeters. So whenever you do apply the blanket stitch, you'll want to go into object properties and increase the length 
and thereby increase the width. The software will also do satin stitch applique and satin stitches can be widened as well. And you can actually create an imprint in the satin stitches so they have texture. There are 195 different satin stitch patterns that can be used. And when you want to increase the width of your satin stitch, that is done in tool options in the outline tab. Then you have decorative stitch applique. And there are over 500 different st stitches in DesignWorks software. And these are fun to use to place around your applique. So you have lots of different options and all these stitches can be mirrored as well in object properties. Then we have needle turn applique. And this is where you use freezer paper and turn under the raw edge of your fabric. And in this project, the, both the freezer paper as well as the fabric pieces were cut out with the cutwork tool and then stitched down with stitch number 47 in the software. I used invisible thread so that it looked like it was hand stitched. And this is not a raw edge, but a turned under edge. Then you have invisible stitch applique, which can use that same stitch. But in this case, instead of a turned under edge of fabric, you're working with a raw edge, also with invisible thread. With reverse applique, this is one of the kinds of applique where you don't need two files, because in this case, you're cutting out the background fabric. So in the center here where you see the pink hearts, the background fabric was cut out and then a piece of fabric was put underneath the hoop. And these pieces were attached then with a decorative stitch around the hearts. So in this case, only one file is needed. Then there's shadow applique. And here the shape is cut out, placed on a back ground fabric over the placement line, then covered with sheer fabric, and then a decorative stitch is stitched around the shape. And I use the decorative bean stitch for this particular project. The decorative bean stitch is found after stitch number 350 in your object properties. And then finally, we have raw edge applique. And with raw edge applique, the tack down stitch is set inside the applique piece. So in essence, the edges are not treated at all and the edges can fray. You can use either a regular basic stitch, in this case, I use the triple stitch, or you can use a decorative stitch. Don't forget, you can do applique letters as well and applique monograms. Now the beauty of the cutwork tool is that you can cut out multiple pieces at the same time. So if you're doing a quilt block with all these different shapes, or well, actually they're the same shapes in different colors, you can stack up your different colored fabric and cut them all at once. Likewise, for all the leaves that are, are the same shape, they can be cut all at once. So it's really a very efficient process. There are lots of different ways to create applique. First of all, some of the design cards by OESD have ready to stitch designs that include cutwork files. So you can use your cutwork tool to cut out the applique pieces to use with those designs. You can also create applique from pictures in the software and you can create applique from embroidery design files that don't have a cutwork file. You can scan applique patterns and create your own applique, or you could draw your own applique pattern. So there are lots of different ways to create your applique. Now we're gonna look at object properties in the, in the cutwork to talk about some of the properties that you can add to your cutwork file. Generally, we want to add a running before stitch, and this is set at an offset, generally at one. It's just a little bit outside the border. This helps hold the applique piece in place 
so that you get a better cut. You can change the number of passes. You can change the length of the stitch. Generally, those are going to be used at um, default settings. You can also add a running stitch. Now, this running stitch occurs after the cut piece. So you can choose a lot of different decorative stitches. It's not used as much because think about the running stitch stitching or the, the, the running stitch stitching after the cutout piece. So if you do check this, realize that you're going to have to bypass the cut stitches or the cut file uh, parts of the design in order to stitch the running stitch before the piece is cut out, because otherwise there's nothing holding that cut out piece in place. You can change the type of stitch, you can change the offset, you can also add a net fill to your cut out area, and you can add a satin serial. So there's lots of different things that you can do in the cut work object properties. In the applique object properties, which is in the fill tab, you can change the offset, which is the distance that the, the design is going to be from the, op, the object edge. You can change the e-stitch, which is a blanket stitch. It's called e-stitch in this software, to a zigzag stitch. And the default is the blanket stitch. And then cleaning refers to how the fabric or the, how the applique fabric will be added. We'll get to the details of that in a minute. So here's the offset. And you can use a positive value, which puts the uh, stitches outside the object, and a negative value, which brings them in. The range of offset is from minus 15 to plus 15, and the default is zero. So in essence, at a zero default, the applique stitch, in, in, and in particular, this satin stitch that you see here, is going to straddle the cut edge of the fabric. You can also use the offset value when you're working with reverse applique. Then two types of basic cover, the E-stitch, which is the blanket stitch, or the zigzag, as you see here. Now, if you don't want to use one of those stitches, you can delete or select um, the outline tab and then replace those stitches with either a satin serial, which is a closer together than the zigzag, or one of the decorative stitches. With applique cleaning, you have three different choices. You have during embroidery, after embroidery, or laser cut. Laser cut is what you choose if you're going to use the cut work tool. And then during embroidery, is go you're going to take a pair of scissors and cut it, the fabric with a pair of scissors after it tacks down. And then after embroidery, would be if you want to do raw edge applique. Now, we're going to do the lesson a little bit differently for raw edge applique, and I'm not going to choose during embroidery. When we get through the lesson and you see the way I stitch it out, you'll see why I don't have to use the during embroidery. So next, we'll bring up the software and start the lesson. When you first open Design Works, you'll do File New, and a wizard opens up. And here, I generally use just uh, the embroidery normal category, and I don't want any fabric color, but you certainly can choose a color if you want. And then click Next. And with this, we're going to get a picture file. So you'll leave the default at From File, and click on Browse and navigate to the location of the Three Flowers CMX. This file will be on the website and give, you can download it to work along with the handout. I'm gonna click on Open and then you can choose, for this particular project, I use the jumbo hoop 
if you need to use a smaller hoop for your machine, you can certainly use a smaller hoop and adjust the size. I'll then click on next and then finish. Now, when you have all three components of design work activated, the default st um, stitch, if you will, that comes into the program is actually paintwork and not a stitch. So we're going to use this and turn it into a cut file. I'm going to select everything and that's done with control plus A on your keyboard. And I'm gonna come over here and click on the auto border. And in this dialog box, you can change the position of the design. And here, if you wanted it to be smaller, you could say you need to work with a smaller hoop. You could actually go to the inside of the hoop if you wanted, or to the inside of the outline if you wanted. But I'm gonna leave it to the uh, outside and it's gonna be actually right on that line. I want a cut line and I'm just gonna click OK. And all of I, all that was necessary to do was that to create a cut line. Now I'm going to come over to my object properties and place a check mark by running before. And I want to change the offset to one and I'll press enter. And this puts a stitching line just outside the cut line. And that will stitch before you need to change to the cut work tool to cut out the pieces. Now you'll notice over here that I have another line of stitching. And this is currently a paint line and I wanna turn it into a stitch line. That was the original CMX file that I brought in. So all I have to do to turn it into a stitch line is to come over to my thread palette and click in the upper left corner of a contrast color. And now this is going to be, and if I run through slow redraw, it's going to stitch the red line first, then it's going to do the running before, and then it will do the cut. So that's all we need to do to create our cut flower. So I would select file, save as, name the file, floral cut, and save it. I've already saved it, so I'm not gonna go through that process. But one important thing to remember is when you create a cut file, it's very important that you use that same file to create your stitch file. So I'm going to begin with this cut work file to create our placement line and our stitching for our flowers. So here in Sequence Manager, we want to select the cut work layer and notice the pair of scissors that is in the right tab, that's the cut work layer. And I'm gonna click on it and press delete. And that leaves just the one, um, the placement line for our next file. I'm gonna use those placement lines that I first want to select everything. And I'm going to change the offset to minus four and press enter. The reason I'm doing this is I'm working with raw edge applique this time. So I want them inset slightly so they don't peek out beyond the edge of the cut flower after it's stitched down. Now we're going to zoom in on the large flower and here we're going to each of the flower, we're gonna use a different type of drawing tool. So the first one that I'm gonna do is the freehand tool. With this tool, you click and hold down and drag your mouse. It's not the easiest thing to do with the mouse. It's more, um, you just have to draw really slowly and it's really easy to make mistakes, but those mistakes can be corrected. You wanna come around and meet the initial um, stitch and that will fill in the object. I'll then press the space bar to select that and I'll come in here to edit shape notes. And here's where you can refine what you drew. 
you can see the squares. Those are called cusp nodes. They make an object turn corners or make sharp points. And I can manipulate those arrows to create a more of an indent. For the round circles, those are called smooth nodes. And I can move nodes. I can also extend the control handles and you can get an idea how that will change the shape. If I have an extra node, like I do here, because I hesitated with my mouse, I can select that and right click and delete the node. Now I want to change the handles here to make a sharper point. And then I want to bring this node around to the top and I can extend that arrow to make it a little more even. Here I have my cusp node, so I'm able to move it. This will be an extra, so I'll select it, right click and delete the node. Now this, this is a cusp node. And I, if I want to change a node, all I have to do is right click on that node and select the opposite kind of node. And then I can manipulate that in any way I want. Here, I want to make a sharper corner. And here, more of an even corner. Here's an extra node, so I can select it, right click and select delete. And again, sharpen the corner. And here, I want to even out this arrow to make that a more rounded. So you can see, you can draw anything and then reshape it to be whatever you want. If I wanted to add a node, I can just double click on the line and that will add a node. And it always adds a smooth node. I'll press the space bar and then I want to get rid of this fill. And one of the ways to get rid of the fill is to come down here and it is a painted fill. You can see by the paint bucket here. I'm going to click in the lower right hand corner of that square and now I have a stitched line. For the next drawing tool, we're going to use the Create Bezier Shape. And to me, this is one of the hardest drawing tools to use. It takes some practice, but keep on practicing and you will get the hang of it. Here, I'm going to click at what would be an indent. And then I'm going to release the mouse and come up and click and drag. And when I click and drag, I start to, to make a rounded um, line. Then I'm going to release the mouse, come back and click. Release my mouse, come up, click and drag form my curve, release the mouse, come down and click, release the mouse, come up, click and drag, release the mouse, click, release the mouse, click and drag. So you can see it's a combination of just clicking and then releasing the mouse, clicking and dragging, coming around and then clicking on the initial click. So I'm going to press the space bar. I can edit this as well. I, I have less editing to do with this. I can move the points, but you can see I don't have any extra clicks with this. So sometimes the, the Create Bezier tool is a little bit easier to use because you'll have less editing to do. I'll press the space bar to select and then once again, eliminate the fill. Now we'll come down and we'll use the outline tool. Now with the create outline shape, you do a combination of shift and clicks and just a click. So whenever I want a cusp node, I hold down the shift key and click. Then I release the mouse and come up and click and I'm dragging to form the shape. I come down, shift and click, and then I come up and click and drag. And then if I click and hesitate, I can also make a cusp node. You can see I didn't hesitate quite long enough. 
um, I can backspace to erase a click and then click and hold or use the shift key. And I get a definite left click or a definite uh, cost node there. Click, drag, click. And again, I'll just show you how to change that node. I'm going to click and then I'm going to shift and click again to make the cusp node. And then I'll come back and click on the original point. Press the space bar, go up to edit shape nodes. And here it's okay to have this rounded edge if you want. But if I do want it to be a pointed shape, I right click on it and choose cusp node. And then I can move my arrows. So editing in this software is easy to do. And again, you have the arrows that you can move and you can rotate arrows, you can lengthen arrows, you can shorten arrows. And when you're done, press the space bar. Another way to eliminate the fill is to go to the object properties fill bucket and click on none. So any of those methods will eliminate the, the fill. Now I want to change these, all these shapes, and I want to use the same color. So I'm going to select them by holding down the shift key and clicking on the line. And I will find some green and I'll click in the upper, well, actually let's do pink. I'm gonna click in the upper left corner and that will add or will change all the lines to pink. I'm gonna select them again. And while they're all selected, in tool options, I want to make sure that I have proportional checked and I'm going to duplicate those. And then I'm going to change the scale to 80% and press enter. And then while they're all selected, I'm going to choose a different color. You've got your scroll arrows on either side and you just click in the upper left corner of a color chip, make sure you're doing threads palette, not brushes, because this is going to be stitching, not painting. And then when you deselect, you can click on each one and move it in within the other object. It's still okay to reshape if you decide that you would like to change that copy a little bit and make it a different shape. So you drag it in so that they are all inside. So we've got our two lines of stitching. Now I do want to select them all. And if I want to select by color, if I come over here to my threads palette, if I right click on a color chip and select by pen color, it's going to select all those that are the same color. And let's say that I wanted to change the type of stitch. Right now, it's just going to be a regular straight stitch. I used a triple stitch on mine, but you can certainly choose a different type of stitch if you wish and add a decorative stitch instead. I also need to do that with my other color. So I'm going to select by pin color and select the triple stitch. So what I have now is a placement line stitching and then two stitches that will serve as a tack down for the applique shapes. Next, I'm going to create the stems. And with this, you can use any of the tools that you want. I'm going to use the freehand tool and I'm just going to click and drag to draw freeform stems. That's the danger of using the create freehand tool. I can undo that. And they are combined. So I'll just I'll just reshape that. 
So I'll do one more. And then I'll select them. And I want to reshape. And here I want to delete this node to make that short. And here I'm going to delete this. node and if I want to extend this I can so you, you have the same editing tools when you work with just straight lines as well I'm going to hold down the shift key and select each of my lines and this time I do want a green I will click in the upper left corner and I now have a green color and for those stems I chose stitch number 21 and when you zoom in, you can see that decorative stitch. Next, we'll do the leaves. And again, any of the shape tools that you want to work with, you can work with. You can choose your favorite tool or you can practice. And for these, I'm going to use the outline tool and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click, release it and do a click. And you can see how the line starts curving. Hold down the shift key and click release and do another click and then come back and click on that original node and all those leaves would be made the same way now someone in this morning's webinar said well couldn't you just copy and paste well yes of course you can take that one leaf that you make and be happy with it and copy and paste and move but if you want a little bit of variety in the shape of your leaf you can also select and, or create each one. And that gives you more practice with the tools as well. So shift, click, click, shift, click, click, shift, click. And we'll do a couple more, but I'll right click. If, I, if you make a mistake like that, right clicking gets rid of what you've done. That comes in handy when you're trying to scroll a lot of times. Shift, click, click, shift click click and shift click and then one more smaller leaf and then when i press the space bar all my leaves are selected because they they're grouped as i go i'm going to eliminate the fill and then while they're selected, I'm gonna choose a different color of green from the stems. And then I'll come up and let's change those to stitch number 37. Then while they're all selected, Again, I'm going to duplicate them. Proportional is still checked. I click on duplicate and I'm going to make these a little bit larger and I'll press enter. Now you can see I've got stitches running from leaf to leaf. And this means that they are combined. So when I click on one, it's going to select them all. If I want to change this type of stitch for everything, I can come in here and click on a stitch and it will convert all those duplicate leaves into a different stitch. But to move them, I need to break them apart. So I can right click and select break apart. And you'll notice how those jump stitches disappeared on the screen once I broke the objects apart. Now these smaller leaves all have jump stitches still. So when I click on them, they will all be selected. And if I want to break them apart, I can right click and click on break apart and those will go away. These two stems are grouped so I can select those and right click and break apart. That way I can move individual objects. And here, if I rest my cursor to get the four pointed arrow, I will move each of those leaves back into position. And as I'm doing this, if I decide, you know, I want more variety there, all I have to do is come over and click 
on a different stitch. And I'm going to change that one as well. So now we have our final design, but it's not exactly in the sequence that it should be. And remember, you can always watch slow redraw and click on start. And you can see that the placement line stitches first, then the tack down. And it's I'll speed it up a bit. And then finally, the stems and the leaves. It's going to create the design in the order that I created it. Well, sometimes that works, and sometimes you might want to change it. And in this case, it, it could be left that way. But if I want to change the stitching order, I can click on Auto Sequence Control, make sure that nothing is selected, and click on OK. And this will break the design into layers. I can click on group by color, which is that first paintbrush icon, and that will simplify my trays. Now, I let's say I wanted the stems to stitch first and then the leaves. I just click and drag to rearrange the sequence. This design is then ready to save as the stitch applique, and then it is going to be sent to the machine through the export icon. So let's go back to the PowerPoint and see how this is all put together. The pattern that I used was a, the daily news bag by Sewing Workshop. Now it's not really important that you use that same bag at all. You can use any bag. You can put this design on a quilt square or you could put it on a, a pillow. Um, it, this was just the pattern that I used. Now, I did have two stitch, two placement lines, but actually, or I have a placement line and a, and a running before stitch in my cut file. And I use this a lot of times when I want to use separate colors of fabric for each of those areas. That way, I don't have any waste in the fabric, and I know that I'm going to be spot on when I cut out my fabric. So here, I hoop two layers of heavyweight tearaway. And I stitch the placement line just on the tearaway. Then I layered three layers or three different fabrics over the placement line. And I stitched the running before and then set up the machine for cut work. So you'll remove the thread, put the cut work tool in, and then work around the design using the four different positions. And after that's done, you have your cut file with all your fabrics cut out. I switched around the layers so that there would be a different type of fabric on top uh, for each of the different flowers. I hooped the background fabric over tearaway stabilizer. I embroidered the leaves, the stems, stitched the placement lines, and then placed the layers of fabric over the placement line and stitched my tack down, which was the triple stitch. Then I use button, uh, the sew on button foot number 18 to sew buttons for the flower center. And the button sew on stitch is in your buttonhole menu of your machine. And now I want to talk to you a little bit about scanning and when, especially when you're going to use auto border. If you scan in a pattern, sometimes the lines are really, really faint. So you want to make sure that you trace over those fine lines. And you can see how jagged this line is. And that creates a lot of nodes. So if you trace over the pattern with a Sharpie or a micron pen and darken the lines a little bit, you'll get a better scan. You don't want jagged edges. And with the jagged edges, that just creates a lot of different nodes that will have to be editing or edited. And for those of you who own Bernina Embroidery Software 8, 
You can use the software to create a CMX file rather than scanning in a file. And the CMX is a vector image. They're sharper lines. You won't have as many nodes in those. And you can actually even edit the nodes before you save the file. If you do want to scan directly into the software, there is a way to do this. Now, usually when we scan, we scan a file, we save it on our computer, and then we bring it in using the from file, like we did with the CMX file. I did the, the pattern for the tabs by scanning it in directly to the software. So I kind of wanted to show you how to do this in case you would like to try this out. So I'm connected to my scanner. And the, the first thing I do, let me back up a slide here, is click in Get Image from Scanner. The scanner initializes, and you can click on Preview, and you will see how the scan is going to look. Now I put a piece of bright pink paper behind my piece so it, the edges would be more defined. It makes it easier to know where the edges of your pattern piece are. When Once it's previewed, you click on scan after you crop the image. So you can click and drag and crop it closer to the pattern piece. And then when you click on scan, it actually scans the next dialog box that comes up is trace, and you can put a dot in front of trace. If you want to draw around it, you can always use open as backdrop. But in this case, I chose trace. And then click on trace at the bottom corner of your dialog box. And the scan is traced and is placed in the software and is ready to edit. Now you can see that the scanning picked up some of the lettering. And so those bits and pieces would be edited. You'd also need to delete the border around the tab pattern. And then you can convert that scan into a cut line and a running before. So with these ultra suede tabs, I did a basting box around the four layers of ultra suede first, and then did a running before, and then cut them with the cut work tool. And I had four exact duplicates to make the tab on my bag. So that kind of finishes the project. Uh, you can't see the tabs in this picture, but the tabs are right here underneath this part of the strap but this shows a close-up of the design. And Julie, I'm ready for questions. Okay, thank you, Debbie. Our first question is uh, when you select file, go to new, can you show us again where you go to open the wizard? Okay, let me bring up the software again. Now, when you just open the software, it will, it will open to a dialog box and you'll get a choice of creating new and I, I can close down the software and show you that so once it opens the wizard automatically pops up i'd already opened the software that's why i didn't get this dialog box but i have create new selected so i click on next and the next dialog box in the wizard is where I select fabric. Okay, great. On the part where you are drawing and tacking down the applique, can you copy, reduce, and paste? Sure, but then you wouldn't get the experience of trying all three drawing tools. <laughs> but yes, you can do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's why I did I did it differently on each one because I wanted to show you each of the three tools. There's usually a method to my madness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we have a lot of questions on uh, the Bernina software, the Bernina embroidery software eight versus design works. 
The first one, can you use the cut work tool in software eight the same as you use cut work in design works? Yes. Okay. And also, are any of the design work stitches offered in the embroidery softwares? Nope. They're all different stitches. Okay. Can I do this with Bernina Embroidery Software and a cut work tool only? Yes, you could you could create it in Bernina Embroidery Software. And of course the handout's not going to do you much good because the the handout is written for um, so, uh, for design works. But yes, you certainly can create it in um, software eight. And you know, I don't I I have cut work in both options, of course. And I for those of you who like to use the paintwork tool, I I use my cut work when I'm designing paintwork designs and want to cut out a paintwork design. I just stay in design works and use the cut option there. If I'm do designing an embroidery design and using cut work, I stay in the embroidery software. So it depends on whether or not you see yourself working with paintwork or crystal work. I don't think it's bad to have both options. If you have the tool um, and you already have design work software, then it's it really is just the purchase of that cut work code card. Great. Can you transfer stitches from design works to your Bernina embroidery software? You bet you can. It's um, it, you it's a complicated process, but it certainly can be done and they can be entered into embroidery software as um, a pattern and then you'd have access to those in embroidery software. Okay. Would you like a webinar on that? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that might yeah be a good webinar in the future. Yeah it is it yeah it would be yes. it would be something that could be done as a webinar. They're saying yes please. <laughs> okay. Do yeah, I have I'm getting a lot of yeses. <laughs> do I have enough interest to do that? <laughs> um, they're coming through now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. And then a lot of questions about the handouts. We we will have the handouts um, and the files on Bernina.com in a couple days. Um, tomorrow, you will receive a follow-up email from GoToWebinar with a recording of the webinar. Also, in a couple days, the webinar and the handouts will be on Bernina.com. Just go to Learn and Create tab at the top right, then click on Classes, and then Webinars. If you have any other questions or we were not able to answer a question tonight, please email me or Debbie. On behalf of Bernina, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.